Snowpiercer. Begin. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Snowpiercer. 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 Yes. Snowpiercer. First time you've seen it, correct? Close. First time. What do yes. you think? Um, Super weird, right? Not bad. Very strange. Yeah. Um, I could not get into the movie for close to the first half of it. Yeah, that's fair. I was like very uninterested. I don't know why. Uh, but then once it kind of started progressing, uh, then I got on board. Then it and started slowing down like right away, second. right? <laughs> Yeah, it, it it gets it gets fast and then back to slow because everyone dies. It like when I first watched it, I was anticipating something. I know we compare everything to the raid, and I'm sure it's exhausting to hear. <laughs> but that fight scene with the guys with the axes in the that that one car, I, I yeah. was like, oh, this is gonna be crazy. Just it's gonna be that was pretty fight scene yeah. after fight scene, like something like that. Every every train car is going to have a new it's going to have something new yeah but no they have the first one where you guys have guns well, th- that don't they have bullets did, it was kind of like that right where there was the one car with sushi <laughs> well, that's so they had the the first car with the guards who don't have bullets they fight that off and they block the doors then the guys with the axes show up and they shut the lights off and they have uh night vision goggles and then the threats are pretty yeah. much done. Um, yeah, there's really not much to it after that, except for the guns and the eggs. Yeah, and they're, they're like assassins more than a giant threat. Yeah. But uh, so, anyways, the the story of Snowpiercer is the the world figures out a way to deal with global warming, and they send a bunch of stuff. Uh, I guess chemicals or like a rocket into space. Something up in the air. Yeah. And, but it, it actually creates, uh, the new, the second ice age or whatever. Everything freezes over. You can't even go outside without dying. Uh, but yeah, just so happened, uh, this guy was able to create a perpetual motion machine that runs a train. So this train is mm-hmm. always running. It's always running off of it, the special engine. And depending on where you were in the on the train, it set up the class system. So the further back, the lower class you were. And the closer to the yeah, front... It's the Hunger Games. Yeah. The closer to the front, the better off you were. The, you live like... Like the Hunger Games, you lived like you're in the capital. You dressed funny, you talked weird, you had no understanding that the world was falling apart around you. It was, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's crazy to me that a class system like that can develop based on nothing other than location. Well, I think it's supply. I think the idea was everyone up at the front, well, yeah. everyone up at the front had tickets. They had invested into it and were part of it. Oh, Everyone okay. in the back were like just kind of let on as a last resort type of thing. They're like, yeah, you can get on, but you're not a passenger. You are essentially a stowaway. Yeah. And so I think that's that where the sense. class system got set up from. But mm-hmm. so this train travels around the United States and in one year, it makes one lap around the whole United States. Yeah. Um, but the back train, the back of the train decides they're going to start a riot. They want to, they're, they're sick of it. They can't do it anymore. Because they don't, they don't have food, right? They're just given these weird protein bars. Yeah. And that's what they have to eat. And, they're forced to work in undesirable conditions. They don't get taken care of, so they're just ready to revolt. Well, they're also uh, taking their again. children out from them. Yeah, they always take the children, and it is said, what's uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Wil- Wilford? Wilford. Milford? Wilford. Wilford. He likes kids. <laughs> That's all that they say. <laughs> he likes small Which children. Which we find out at the end. We should probably clear it up because I, I imagine we might forget. 
he takes the kids oh. to run the train. There's parts. Yeah, because it, there's something that can only be done by a very small person. Well, there, there's parts that and. break and wear out. And so to fit in the, the, the cavity to be able to reach and turn whatever piece, it has to be a child. Yes. So that's why yeah. he does it. But they don't know that. Not that they would be okay with it if they no, knew. No, they it. don't know. But no one knows what's going on. Yeah. So uh, the main guy. Um, oh, I, well, I can't even think of his name in the movie. Chris Evans, his character. Yeah. No, Curtis. Curtis, yeah. right. He is going to be essentially the leader of this uh, revolution. Yep. Um, which is not the first time that this has happened. No. It's, but it it's it's happened multiple times in the past, but it just keeps getting shut down. He decides he's going to lead the revolution to the front of the train because they're in the very back, the tail section. Yep. Um, there was one part where they take that dude who threw the shoe. And uh, they stick his arm out of the train. Yeah, so and it's out there for the the guy. His Go son ahead. gets taken from him, and he's fighting back, yeah. trying to get his son. And he throws his shoe, and I think he hits the woman, right? Yeah. And so he has to be made an example of. So they open up a like a porthole and shove the the guards of the train shove his arm outside this hole and make him wait for seven minutes. And after seven minutes, they pull it back in. It's completely frozen through, and they smash it with a sledgehammer. Yeah. That is frightening. <laughs> and also just really cold. Like that's That also just goes to show how cold it is outside. Seven minutes, you will be dead. It's cold outside, and it's cold inside. Their hearts. Ooh, icy. <laughs> icy hearts. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, it, it, just a lot of stuff going on in the, in the first part that shows the, the struggle, the, the class struggles. And anyways, Chris Evans is going to lead this revolution. They, they start making their way through the train. This is where, I don't know, for this first part, I just, I could not get into it. Pretty much up until they got the guy who opens the doors for them. What was his addiction? I I was very confused about that. So that was, um, it was like a byproduct of oil or something like that. It, it was like some type of they would they would smell it or smoke it. I don't know. It was weird. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it, it turns out to be an explosive. Yeah. Um, they. They use him to get through the doors. He's got his, his group of guys. His daughter. Um, oh, yeah, that guy's yeah. daughter. Who, what is her thing? She's she can magic. Like, Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. They don't, magical. they don't explain it. She just can see through things and can sense where people are. Yes. So they're making their way through the train. They get to, I guess, what's the first Real conflict that they have. Oh, I did want to talk about that humongous security guard that they had that was like swinging that whatever it was oh. around. I wanted to see him hit somebody. <laughs> I was really disappointed that he didn't get at least one person because that would have been. Well, you get that baby guy jumping all over the place like a ninja. Yeah. Um. Okay, so the first conflict, is that the one... That's the one with the guards with no bullets, yep. right? He, he, they don't, they don't believe that they have bullets, but they're not a hundred percent sure. But something, something they believe the bullets ran out like four years mm-hmm. earlier. And um, Chris Evan grabs the gun, puts it to his forehead and pulls the trigger. It's an aggressive way to figure out if there's bullets. Yeah. If you're holding onto the barrel of the gun, why not aim it at something safe? Yeah, why not? Yeah, just or aim it at a bad guy. So if it does have a bullet, you can still get one yeah, of them. Yeah, because you would think, since it, because we find out later, they definitely do have bullets. 
give all yeah. the guards one or two bullets and be like, hey, just just in case they want to play Russian roulette with somebody. <laughs> yeah. Or just like if you need if things go crazy, shoot once. They're going to stop. They're going to think you have a gun full of ammo. Yeah. Do you think if that if that guard did have one bullet and then Chris Evans shot himself in the head, <laughs> anyone would be like, "Well, I bet it was just one." Yeah, that would that would have been the end of it. Not only would have their yeah their mocking been probably. dead, but <laughs> yeah, they would have everyone would have been so confused. Why did he do that? Why did he shoot himself in the forehead like that? <laughs> yeah, so. So they don't have bullets, so that starts a big fight, uh, which they ultimately win. Yes. Um, so the next, okay, so they're moving through the trains. Uh, I'm trying to remember the next thing that they encounter. Is that the, the groups with the axes? Yeah, well, so they, after that first one, they go to the next one that is the food production, where they find out all their food. Right. Is ground up crickets or cockroaches? Yeah, it's just it's just bugs. bugs, and they're like disgusted by it. Which, eh, I don't care. Yeah, it's, I doubt it's the worst thing that's happening. Yeah, on train. remember that guy's arm? That was a lot <laughs> yeah worse. for sure. But yeah, Chris, I, I bet he wishes he had both hands to eat those crickets. Which uh, let, let's not spoil this part. But Chris Evans definitely talks about eating something way worse than bugs. Toward. Oh yeah, <laughs> like yeah. there's no way. She's like, oh wait, it, I only have to eat crickets today. Yeah, <laughs> what a day. <laughs> but uh, we'll we'll save that for the end because that's my favorite part of this movie. <laughs> it's so dumb. It's the uh, worst monologue of any movie. I I can already tell you right now. I'm gonna splice the audio of whatever you say <laughs> later in this movie and, and pair it up with things you said from a quiet place. <laughs> Um, so yeah, they go to be quite a juicy team. from the bug car. They go to the prisoner car where they find. Well, cause what they decide, right, is they not necessarily get, they don't need to get to the front of the train. They just need to get to the water yeah, they, and then they'll, ha- they'll hold all the they power. They think if they can control the water, they control the train. Yep. But they find out cause they capture that crazy lady who's missing teeth. Which seemed weird. Oh, she was wacky. Didn't the teeth thing was a weird choice. Weird that she pulled them out. Yeah, because weird that she didn't it show that they have like dentists and all that stuff. Yeah, but uh, so she's like, no, the front of the train breaks up the snow, and that's how we get our water. Yeah, I I felt like the implication of that was saying like, you guys are drinking our filtered pee water basically like this is straight yeah just, <laughs> you guys are getting the waste water like that would have made more sense yeah. but uh they don't say anything like that so then they decide we do have to get to the front of the train so let's get this crazy guy and offer him drugs and he will help us get to the front because he knows how to hack into all the doors right also, at the same time, they they keep getting these little notes. Yes. Right, like the like one says water, one says blood, blood. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the other ones were, besides the last one. Um, I don't know if there even were more than that. <laughs> I don't remember. One said crickets. And no, so, but. They, so they get to the next train or the next car, and this is where you have all the guys in black hoods with axes. They start fighting them, and they're actually doing a pretty good job. They're holding off these guys. They're making decent progress. And then they decide, or not decide, but they end up going through a long tunnel. All the lights. Which the guys were prepared for. Yeah. The, uh, the, the I bad mean- guys were. If you think about it, right, if you're in really close quarters, uh-huh. there's only, like, you can be really trained and you can have a big group of guys, but, like, there's only so much you can do without 
hurting yourself. Like it's just because they have a big group doesn't mean they can all fight at the same time. It's like the movie Three Hundred. Like, you're really, yeah, exactly. You're you're really looking at taking down maybe five guys yeah. at a time. That's all you got to worry but, about. Five guys at a time. But also, that means the guys with axes should have done a better job. Oh, they should have done much better. They should have been trained to to fight in these exact situations. Yeah, you got five guys with axes and five guys without axes fighting. They needed they should have done like a a, a phalanx with shields there and you go. and they, what they need is is yeah. spears. Cuz you you're not going to get flanked, right? So you don't got to worry about anything like that and then just you all you got to do is cover your front and stabby stab. You're done. <laughs> That would have been over real fast. But uh, no, they're not that smart. They lose until they go into the, the tunnel. Then they put on um, night vision goggles, and then they're just destroying the the back car. Because they, they can't see. It's, it's, to them, it's just pitch yeah. black. And I didn't like the way they filmed this. This felt very... Um, I don't, yeah. Point? I, I really, it, it, it felt very out of place. It was, it was like POV and it just, I don't know, it, it didn't fit very well. Yeah. <sighs> Almost like the point of view of the lady. Some, well, sometimes, yeah. Like the, some of the, the point of views didn't make any sense. And she's like, why are you looking at me? Look over there. And it was just like, oh, this is dumb. <laughs> why, yeah. why would you do any of this? Um, but they, Chris Evans realizes, oh, that kid has a match still. We just need fire. And then this little kid starts yeah. running with the, the torch and the one armed man rips the torch out of the kid's arm. Then the ninja guy rips the torch out of his arm. Then he runs all the way up to the front. And because they have fire, now the, the good guys start that winning again. See. Um, yeah, I felt that wouldn't, I don't know. I feel like they'd still be at a disadvantage. Huge. It would have been over by that point. Also, hey guys, you see uh, all the fire now? Aim for those guys. <laughs> I don't even have to see anything. I could just aim for the light. Uh, um. But yeah, they they eventually yep. win. Um. They are able to grab uh, the yep. lady. That's when uh, I don't remember her that, name, but she was wacky. That's when they find out that the water. The water idea is yeah, it's not gonna work. Yeah, nothing. Is her name Mason? Was that Tilda Swinson? Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Um, so okay, so then from there they pretty much make her take them to yep. the front. She she kind of says like, "Hey, don't kill me." I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll help you get to the front of the yeah, train. People have never made it this far into the train before either. So all the, they're walking past people who are like the capital citizens from Hunger Games who are just yeah. like, oh, whatever. I, I don't know what's happening, but yeah, cause they don't, they probably have never made it past the axe guys. No. Yeah. I think that was the, the thing. And so this- they walk through, let's say six different cars, right? They walk through the mm-hmm. aquarium. They walk through the the. Is it atrium? Is that where you grow the plants? They they yeah. They walk much. through a cold freezer that has all the cow and chicken and all that stuff. They walk through a classroom. The good food. They walk through a sauna, mm-hmm. and then they finally get to the engine. They never walk through anyone's well, house. Gonna... They yeah never that's... run into more people than the classroom. And yet you have all these soldiers and like all this, like, where are people living? You ju- like a train is a straight line. And if you're going from the back right. to the front, you have to go through, you're going to walk through the it. entire thing. <laughs> so that would mean you're walking through living quarters. You'd be walking through. Maybe they just didn't show it. No. Also, where are the chickens? The live chickens? Where are the live cows? They don't show any of that. Uh, they're on on top. <laughs> on of top, the okay. Duh. Yeah, I don't know. I I mean, I just you just have to be under the assumption that there's cars that we didn't see. Yeah. Uh, okay, so 
they get to the classroom and that's where a lot of these kids yes. are and they are being taught about the owner of the train Wilford and they have like Wilford and they have songs about him they have hymns uh, about and him. then yeah right and then the freaking weird dude comes through with his uh, New Year's yeah. eggs. Cause, oh, so that's something else that happened during the act scene. Right when they're – during the fight, someone blows a whistle and they say, we made it another year. Everyone stops fighting. Everyone does a cheer. Yeah. Then they go right back to fighting. And I was like, this is – Yeah. Nobody – that's not how – that no. <laughs> that's not how it would work. No, for sure. Um, so it's a new year. He brings his New Year's eggs. Obviously, everyone gets an egg. They are hard boiled and full of guns. <laughs> yes, not not quite. Uh, the eggs are not full of guns. Little mini guns <laughs> fit inside the eggs. But yeah, in, in the basket there are guns. The teacher pulls out a gun. The egg man pulls out a gun, and he's like, "This is something else that you thought was extinct." Because if someone says like, oh, I, I thought chickens were extinct. And then he's like, something else you thought was extinct. And then he starts shooting. And uh really should have killed a lot more people than so, he did. Oh, for sure. They So they kill uh the one-armed guy who lost his arm in yep. the beginning. And the mom, and right? They, no, she dies in the sauna. Yeah, she dies a little later. Um they The teacher ends up getting shot. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I felt like there was someone else. I almost the rest of his guys get shot at that point. Well, there's a, it's a small group going from that point from the, from the water. She leads a group of like six people. Yeah, it's not very much. Um, and then he eventually kills her. Yeah. So she dead and they are making their way through. They get to that that sauna. Uh, they still have the the door opener and the daughter, and then the mom and Chris Evans. And I, I want to say that's it at that point, um, right? So his buddy dies during the the, the axe fight. fight. The the baby boy, I think, makes it to the sauna. Um, I don't remember. Yeah, maybe. I think so. Because he, he's fighting at the very end, right? Oh, no. He gets stabbed. I, he, I, I really he, don't Yeah, remember. he's definitely in the sauna because he saves Chris Evans because the guy's about to stab him in the face. And he puts his hand oh, in the way right, right, and right. catches the knife with his yeah. hand and then gets stabbed. Oh, yeah. And that, okay, that so guy they make it who is basically yeah. Jason from Friday the 13th who can't die and is, like, unstoppable <laughs> – was ridiculous. And there's one point. I what I thought was re- when they're shooting yeah, at each other. I was about to say that that was pretty ridiculous. It, what it reminded me of is that scene in in John Wick two uh-huh. when they're walking through the <laughs> yep. the the air is the uh, airport the mall. and they're just like low key shooting <laughs> shooting guns yeah. at each other and no one is even <laughs> noticing. Oh man, yeah, because so he's like five trains behind. And Chris Evans is, you know, up ahead and there's a bend and uh, they can see each other for a moment. So they start shooting at each other, but they have to shoot like a hundred bullets. The logistics would be so important. Yeah, they have to shoot like a hundred bullets to break through this bulletproof glass to finally take one shot at each other that would have killed the other person. But then they just hit bulletproof glass on the other side and it's like. All right. Well, that was a thing. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. ridiculous. And uh, why are e- either of them expert marksmen? I was going to say Chris Evans should be the worst. Yeah, shooter, for sure. Because he's got probably no experience. He got on the train at yeah. 17 and has been doing nothing of the sort. for. Yeah, definitely years. not shooting. Yeah, not at a speeding moving target where not only is your target moving, but you are also moving. <laughs> but you're moving at the same pace, so I don't... And opposite directions, but it's opposite no, directions. It's yeah, they're not moving the same direction. The train is always in relation to itself. You're in relation to yourself. <laughs> okay. It's the equivalent of shooting at a car going the opposite direction. No, it's not. You. 
It's equivalent of shooting yeah. at a car that is going the same direction at you, but is behind you by 400 yards or whatever. No, because they're on opposite sides of the turn. But the, 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 the distance is always staying the same. No, it's, not <laughs> it's being drugged behind. I don't care for your math. <laughs> I don't think it's right. Anyways, it, it was ridiculous. Uh, I didn't right. like it. And you're wrong. So anyways, moving on, we're going to go to the sauna yeah. scene. And that dude shows up. I, I don't know if he's what his position in this whole thing is. but Super he, assassin, man. Yeah, he's fighting a lot. That that um, should have been three different characters. Oh, yeah. Like, for sure. just have three opposing guys who die. And you solve yeah. uh, so many issues. Making that one character really it makes been, it tough to buy into. Yeah. It should have been like the Punisher, right? Where they just keep sending bigger villains after yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. So, he, they get or this like fight, Captain America. and then, yeah, that too. I'm trying to remember how that scene went down. Uh, they, mm, I don't remember. He comes across the, the girl in the sauna, uh-huh. right? Be- hiding behind the yep. big lady. And then goes to attack but her. the dad steps in. And the dad... Yeah intervenes they fight uh oh man i I've, this part's fuzzy for me for some reason well basically what happens is chris evans gets like everyone is getting knocked out by that guy chris evans has a gun and is trying to kill him can't do it gets knocked out so laying on the ground knocked out the guy takes a knife and does the biggest lunging stab you could ever imagine to give as much yeah. time as possible for baby boy to slide his hand in between, catch it through the middle of his hand. Knife goes all the way through mm. and then fights him. And they're wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. Guy takes the knife again, stabs him in the chest just like it's saving Private Ryan. Kills baby boy. Yeah. And gives Chris Evans the time to get up and shoot him, right? Mm-hmm. Shoots him. Guy doesn't die again. But yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know what his deal was. Yeah, it, 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 there was no logic to that character surviving twice. But uh, so Chris Evans continues on, finally gets to the front, meets Wilford, the man in black, who the guy's like, you know, you did really great. I orchestrated this whole thing. This yeah. is my plan. He's like, this is kind of what we planned on the whole time. And uh, I want you to take over. <laughs> and he's like, I go, what? <laughs> it, and so it became Willy Wonka in the Chocolate yeah. Factory. He's like, I want you to take over. I want you to be my successor because I'm getting old. And I need someone people will follow. And Chris Evans is like, see, he- all right. And which makes sense. Like, I mean, that's kind of what he was trying to do anyways. And so if Wilfred is willing to just yeah. give it over, it's like, it makes kind of sense why he would do it. But then the Asian girl runs in was, and is like, look down here. There's a little boy that he's using. And he's like, yeah, we have to use little boys. Yeah. Sorry. That's a, comes with a deal. He's like, hey, lady, sorry. You're making it creepy. It's not as creepy <laughs> as you think. That I, it's practical. It's just my slave. I really wish they would have, uh, hit on that point more, right? Cause yeah, it's wrong to kidnap kids. I'll give you that. But. If they don't do it, if they don't force these kids into child labor, they all die. Hmm. What's the... You're starting to sound like a real gale. (laughs) (laughs) But you know what I mean? Like, that, that was a, that would be a compelling question to put forward. Like, they kind of do it, but they don't ever... Chris Evans is like, no, this is wrong. I would never do something like this. I would never abuse a little child to keep myself alive. I would rather not do this and have all the children die. <laughs> yeah. But uh 
So he decides he's not going to do it. And he, does he kill Wilford? No. So before um, before he talks to Wilford, he is talking to the Asian guy. And the Asian guy is like, come on, we're almost there. You know, I'm going to blow up the train. And he gets all that drugs and packs it together. He's like, we're going to make an escape for it. Yeah. Come with me. And he's like, no, that's crazy. You can't survive. No. And then he goes on this long monologue, which is the greatest <laughs> monologue that has ever been monologued. Oh, man. That talks about. I want, can you reset it word for word, please? I, <laughs> I know that you, you told me last week you, you were working on memorizing it too. Let me see. Let me see if I can find it. All right, let's see. Here's the. All right, here. You ever been to the tell section? Do you have any idea what went on back there? When we boarded, it was chaos. Yeah, we didn't freeze to death, but we didn't have time to be thankful. Wilford's soldiers came. They took everything. A thousand people in an iron box. No food, no water. After a month, we ate the weak. You know what I hate about myself? What I... I know what people taste like. I know that babies taste best. There was a woman. And that should have been. <laughs> there was a woman. And she was hiding with her baby. And some men with knives came. They killed her. And they took her baby. And then an old man, no relation, just an old man stepped forward and said, give me the knife. And everyone thought he'd kill that baby himself. But he took the knife and cut off his arm and said, here. Eat this if you're so hungry. Eat this and just leave the baby. I'd never seen anything like that. And the men put down their knives. You've probably guessed who that old man was. That baby was Edgar. And I was the man with the knife. I killed Edgar's mother. And one by one, other people in the tell section started cutting off their arms and legs and offering them. It was like a miracle. And I wanted to. I tried. It's a month later. Wilford soldiers brought these portion, uh, protein blocks. We've been eating that ever since. 18 years I've hated Wilford. 18 years I've waited for this moment. And now I'm here. Open the gate, please. <laughs> the greatest, greatest thing ever written. Uh, the dude. I like it, <laughs> Babies taste the best. <laughs> yeah, naturally. Oh man. That, but it's funny. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm about to eat this baby and this old dude offered his arm. That's like saying, hey, no, don't eat that steak. Here's a piece of jerky. <laughs> it's like, it's, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat the steak, what? but I might still take the How jerky. How about this? Since you already cut How about it this? Off. They just killed the lady. Eat the lady. How much food do you need? Yeah, that's. They killed the mother to steal know. the baby, to eat the baby. Eat the woman first. It's it's wasteful. Wasteful. Also, they, no uh, way, a hundred percent, never gonna happen. You are not gonna cut your own arm off and say, "Here, eat this. Leave the baby alive." You will be in so much pain, so delirious, you would not be able to get out any sentences, let alone probably finish cutting yeah. off your arm by yourself. Yeah, you'd probably pass out before you yeah. even finish. And then, then everyone's going to look at you like, what is he doing? <laughs> they just eat him. They just kill him also. <laughs> yeah. So, so his one of the big parts of his story was the fact that he never cut his arm off like everybody else did. Yeah. He's so like, I can't lead because I have on, two arms. Is something that he says. Yeah. He uses that arm to save an innocent child. Well, two arms are better to hold a woman with, Taylor. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, the, I, well, I forgot. But yeah, he does, he does shove his arm in a gears and, uh, it does, does it rip his arm off? I don't know. Just so. like crunches his arm up pretty good. It just hurts. Pulls the kid out. Doesn't matter. Asian guy blows up the train anyways, and they're the only people who survive. <laughs> they, yeah. I guess the boy survives. The so, Asian girl and the little boy so, survives. Yeah, th that's who survives. So what's the implication that... Also, 
I've been calling sustainable to live outside the trade. One second. I was calling that ninja guy baby boy. That's Edgar. He was the baby who Chris Evans killed to try to eat or killed his mom to try to eat who ended up saving him. But what was your question? Is is the implication there at the end that it is sustainable to live outside of the train? Where at that point where they got off because there was polar bears. That it was, while still very cold, more It's habitable. livable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but since it is a child raising an even smaller child, they were dead by that Probably. night. No idea how to get food. Yeah, they got eaten by the polar bear. <laughs> yeah. And they didn't have any food. They didn't know how to hunt. They've never been outside the train before. And they're in yeah, they have no the life worst skills, survivable conditions you can imagine. But it's just the two of them because her dad just blew up the entire train and months. probably killed everyone else. Oh, absolutely. And, and the way that that train crashed, you know, like some people blew up or there's so many different things happen. It's conceivable that like each different group, you know, per train car – Died a different type of way. <laughs> yeah. Like, these guys blew up. These guys were crushed. These guys were just exploded. These guys drowned in all the pee water. What about the aquarium? How come all the fish weren't flopping around? Oh, yeah. I'm sure it... That would have definitely broke. And then it would have just froze immediately. It would have been like Cloverfield Paradox. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Snowpiercer is a super weird movie. Uh, it's kind of fun. Uh, it was, it, it was, uh, it was almost a little comical. Yeah. Uh, any parts with like Tilda Swinton, just like the way her character was, was like a little yeah. over the top. So it kind of made it less serious. Um, but it, it in general, or like this, the, the hymns that yeah. they sing, it, it was funny, but in general, it was just yeah. strange. Not what I was expecting yeah, I, at all. Yeah, like I enjoy movies or shows that are like shot like with this hyper realistic, like kind of different style. That like I don't expect everything to be yeah. grounded in reality. This is not my right. expectation. It's just I want it to be grounded in its own reality. And when things grounded in, yeah, something. like you can do whatever you want. You can create whatever world you want. But if you're going to do something that's not consistent with the actual world, you have to establish the rules of your new world. And I, I feel like yeah. they did a poor job of making that clear. Yeah, I agree. Um, it was just, it was, it was yeah. strange. But, uh, so. But, but I liked it. Yeah, I, I don't really have anything else to say about it unless you do. Um, no, not really. That's, so that's all I we got. will be back on uh, next Saturday with the hateful eight Quentin Tarantino's cold Western getting off the train. Yes. Cool. Getting the cabins. <laughs> get off the train, get in the cabins. <laughs> uh, I've never seen it. Shut the door. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to, oh yeah, that's looking right. forward to watching. I don't know much about it it is uh it's it's a it's your typical old tarantino type yeah. movie it's 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 pretty funny is though it, i like it from what i understand it's like a stressful conversation yeah that makes sense it's it, lots of high tension yeah. situations kind of like uh, uh um, you know in glorious bastards when they're in the german bar yes. and it's like yeah everything yeah. like you if you say the wrong thing, you're going to get killed. I, uh, from my understanding, yeah. this movie it's is just like, like that. that for the entire movie. Uh, f- yeah, for for a good most part of it, yeah. I would say. So I'm looking forward to it. Should be good. Um, but if you want to check out our review of that, it will be up on Patreon already because every episode comes out two weeks in advance over there, only for a dollar. And this is 2025. <laughs> and uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Icing That Pod. Like us on Facebook. And we will be back soon.